from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier. We're here on the ground in New York City for Consensus 2018's Blockchain Week. I'm here with David Siegel, who's the CEO of The Pillar Project, also the author of the Token Economics Handbooks, um, entrepreneur, um, mentor to companies. Thanks sure. for coming on. Thank you, John, great to be here. So I'm excited to talk with you because I've been saying all week, I love token economics, it's a core part of the, the business model, disruption right. is part of the key formula where blockchain shines, it's where the rubber meets the road, in some say, so let's jump in. Sure, you know, is sure. How much is being discussed here about that? I mean, obviously ICOs are well known and people are, are looking at that road, but token economics, the importance of it. First, I think it's important to understand we're at the very beginning of this, it's a steep learning curve. We have these old Model T tokens called the ERC-20 token, which we will get rid of and build better things. Uh, we have models that are mostly based on old, on, you know whenever there's a new technology, we first imitate the old stuff yeah. until we see what the new. So one of the really exciting new things that's come out of this is effectively the Ethereum model, where you raise some money, you build a system, and it's open source, it's free. Anyone can take it and do anything with it, but it requires its own token to work. And the people who sell those tokens, you sell about 70% to your funders, yeah. and that, that creates the economy, but you hold about 30% back. And as the value goes up, as the network effect kicks in, and as these things rise in value, your 30% funds the project indefinitely after you run out of the first. So that's a pretty exciting model. That's what I call sort of basic tokenomics. You have no business model, you have no income model, you're totally open source, but your token powers your platform and you have some tokens in your back pocket. Yeah, and this, the general formula you see is 70-30, uh, roughly, is that's that just about, a pattern? That's normal, now, now that's in a single sale and what we see now in, in ICO land is pre-sale and then, and then the big sale. I think we'll go to a more staged model because I think too many companies are overfunded, too many projects are overfunded. $240 million for status, and maybe we don't need that much yeah, to yeah. start a project with a white paper. Yeah. So I think we're, I hope we'll go to a staged model. Where well, you explain maybe, stage model, like yeah, a tranches or? Yeah, you sell 20% and raise, what do you need to get to first base? Three million to show a minimum yeah. viable product and get traction. I mean, yeah. how, what yeah, it makes need, sense. You know, what projects <laughs> need more than three, maybe four. I mean, yeah. it, you don't need 20 million. And then you do that, but now you've got 80% of tokens in reserve. So now things are going well. Your token has gone for, let's say, five cents to 20 cents. Now you can sell another 20%. So the funding of the platform is the token economics kick in for your other example. That 30%, 70 goes raised, and 30% funds the platform yeah, indefinitely. Yeah, that's typical. If you do the staged approach, what you're mm -hmm. saying is mm -hmm. there's more power in reserve to fund the platform. Because if, also, you, can, if also, you get the first base, you might get the second. I think investors have been too gullible. And they're looking at these 50, 80, 100 million dollar raises and going, oh, me too, I have fear of missing out. I want to get in on that too. That's the big deal of the day. <laughs> that is the one that's probably going to have lousy returns, right? Yeah, these yeah. things are overfunded and not. there's no real uh, give and take with the market. Yep. You know, to get, like, Nothing ever really works the way you plan. Yeah. No business plan is ever worth anything. Think of you know Google, Apple, Microsoft. Their, their first business plans are for something else. <laughs> so find groups of people that you can give money to, not too much, get to first base, get some traction, make something, listen to the market, continue to you know build what people want, and then your token will rise, and then you sell the next. So and I got to ask what? you. It's very much like venture capital, right? Yeah. We do it in, fa in yeah. stages. It's, it's pragmatic. It's the right way. To, I think right. an investor and the entrepreneur. But by the way, your point is also valid because, like in venture capital, if you take on too much money, you could actually fail. You're not it, optimized, and, it, and we've seen that before. Good allocation of capital. Now we got a lot of innovation to do. Wouldn't would be great if we could do a thousand projects at like two or three, four million dollar level and see which ones 
come out of that and then give them, give them more. David, let's walk through a use case. So I'm an uh, sure. entrepreneur or I'm a growing business yeah. and I maybe bootstrapped it or maybe took a little bit of seed funding um, and did some cloud technology, open source, and whoa, I got a product. And I go, well, you know what? The growth strategy for me as a company is to, right. is to use token economics because I got a decentralized um, use fit there. Sure. And I see a way to scale and grow with tokens. Mm -hmm. How should I set up my token economics? I got security tokens, <laughs> I got utility tokens. Do I do a special sure, purpose I, vehicle? It just sounds so complicated. I'm making funny faces, John, because, <laughs> because I see too many tokens where, you know, we always say, and I'm a token designer, well, what does the token do? Well, the answer is it raises money. That is the number one answer, it raises money. Well, does it actually do anything for the token holders? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe okay, down the it gives, road. It gives you access to the system. Is that a good answer? So I think, actually, we should be turning most of these token sales into equity sales. And that's a different kettle of fish. So I, I honestly think people misunderstand the ICO concept. And they should. we should think of ICOs as we know them today as project finance, not corporate finance, not company, not startup finance. Good. Startup finance that's should be done point. with equity. Equity is something you hold very dear. There's only 100% of it. Yep. You sell it only if you need to, to get to the next level. And yep. equity means your shareholders are along for the ride. They may have to vote you out of, out of your uh, job to me at before. some point. Happened right? to me before. Th that That's you may, capital. You may be acquired. You may, any number of things can happen to equity. And project finance is different. So, so the Pillar Project is an open source project. It's a it's a nonprofit foundation in Switzerland. No one owns it. It can't be bought. Our goal is to do one project that we said in the white paper. We are on track to do that, but if for some reason we couldn't do that, I think the money should go back to the people who funded your white paper, not some random right. ride off in the hay. David, take a minute to talk about the Pillar Project. I was going to get to that. Let's, <laughs> let's go to that. What's okay. the Pillar Project about? How did this come to so, life? Sure. What's the current status? So the Pillar Project is a good example of an open source, nonprofit project that uses tokenomics and is not a company and has no equity. We have a token that will give you access to our wallet, which is coming this summer. And the wallet's meant to be uh, and initially just a cryptocurrency wallet like many others, but with so many differences, John. So, so for example, there will be a, a name lookup, an address book, and you'll find me by name, and you'll send me tokens, currencies by name, or you'll trade with me by name. You'll never see an Ether address. You'll never see a Bitcoin address. No phishing, no hacking, no wacky cut and paste errors and mistakes. For example, our, the, the Blockchain Explorer will be built into our wallet so as you send me something or trade something, you'll be getting status information all the time. You'll never go to a blockchain explorer. All these nice things are built in. We have lots of features for your mom to make it easy for her to understand and keep it very so simple. So you've abstracted away some of the complexities. We've added complexity on the back end to do the services that make the front end very simple. Okay, got it. And it's current status of the project? We'll be shipping wise. the first, well, we have raised money last July. We had a $20 million funding last July. Uh, that has gone up because Ether has gone up. We've got about 50 people full time. We're so in London. So you're first base or second base? We'll be on first base in July. <laughs> okay. we, we've got to get a product out the door. So it's the wallet? It's a wallet to start with, but also yeah. it will help you manage your personal data. It will help you be GDPR compliant. Yeah. We'll have an exchange and we'll be doing equity ICOs. We'll be doing, in the wallet, we'll be doing, for example, with the utility ICO, you'll issue your token, you'll sell it to people, they'll buy it in the wallet, and then trading will be immediate. You'll be listed. Everything right there. Don't move stuff around. We're trying to create a place that's safe for consumers. Got it. All right, so not to, I love this concept about open source, and uh, it's kind of threaded. Some people are open source guys mm. like me and you who mm. have seen that mm. movie go from you know, radical mm. and second tier citizen to primary tier power in the world. Mm. As blockchain takes a community focus, yeah. we're seeing the same business model that made Red Hat very famous. That's the power in the Linux Foundation. This notion of projects mm. Yeah. And, and in open source, it's a distinction between project and product. Upstream projects yes. of community, of downstream products, <clears throat> downstream activity is where people productize yes. the project. Yes. I see a pattern happening in this, this okay. world where right. you're and starting to see some of that. Interesting. Okay. Your thoughts on this, because that's ethos has proven. This world mm. has got a lot of growth to it. Are we seeing this open source ethos and principles 
architecting in some of the successful crypto uh, projects. I, I would take this productization analogy pretty far because it's true in the profit world too. It's true with startups often do this as well. It's a it's a service. You get better at it. You productize it. Yeah. That's pretty common. So I think that's that's part and parcel of just solving customer needs and then scaling. Yeah. Right. Uh, the nonprofit thing or the the um, the open source thing is different because you can't make money on your open source thing. You've got to find another way. Yeah. Right. And here in blockchain world, we're using scaling effects and tokens. Yeah. So so let's go to tokenomics, where you you can start an ecosystem fresh with a token that has no value and Ether had no value on day one, yep. right? But it's almost no value. And through network effect and use, and the fact that it's a limited number, the limited number is important. The limited number makes it so that it's scarcity, right? It's got yep. value to people who can see, oh, later it might be worth more. So you got both natural buyers and speculators coming into a system. And this is what's giving the SEC a hard time yeah. Yeah. because they can't they see don't whether it's. It. Is it a security or is it a, 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 like a gym, well, it's a, it's like a gym serious, membership? It's a serious problem because right? they don't understand it. They're causing a lot, a lot of, uh, um, they're stunting a lot of growth in my opinion. Right. But uh, the thing about yeah. it, token economics is what you're getting at. And this yeah. is where I kind of squint through the noise. Yeah. I understand internet infrastructure. Yeah. Web 1.0, you got URLs, you got DNS. Yeah. You have infrastructure. Yeah. Google has cost per click, all that apparatus yes. doesn't work for network effects. <laughs> so, so if you look at, Network effects as being the, the the main value proposition of most of these opportunities. Yeah. Um, why why would we use an e-commerce stack, an old model? Because how do you measure yeah. networks? Tokens are becoming and wallets yeah. are becoming a key infrastructure. I see yes. this coming, and I see the network effect, tokens becoming both an instrumentation vehicle and a transactional currency opportunity. So, this is a dynamic that blockchain could really. And so I think the huge opportunity, John, is that instead of fake news and fake everything and fragile DNS systems and things that are centralized, we can decentralize things now with a token at the center that puts skin in the game. And a great example is science. You know, we do science pretty badly. Um, it's whoever can get budget for whatever wacky project. Mm -hmm. And if we had a betting, a side bet system where people could bet on the outcome of projects, even when you propose them, yes. the, the people who make the decisions of whether to fund these things could look at the odds first of what the crowd thinks. Yes. And if the crowd is right about the outcome, the winners take the money from the losers. Yeah. And this skin in the game concept yeah. is it's being a marketplace. used. The oh. market dynamics of what you just said, I think is very important. This changes the evaluation yes. structure based upon new information. So, so the price of fake news is almost zero. And we saw that in the yep. last election. Yep. We see that in Facebook every day. We see that on the front page of the New York Times. Yep. The price of fake news is close to zero. If it costs you money, that it when it turns out your stuff is fake, if you have to put up money alongside your news and then we find out it's fake and you lose it, that will change things. Yes. So the skin in the game tokens, and you can actually Google skin in the game tokens and learn a bunch of interesting models, is what's coming next. Well, we have to bring you on board the Cube uh, project that we're starting. We're tokenizing our platforms, and we think about this all the time. Yeah. It's very cutting yeah. edge. Yeah. David, really great yeah. to have you on. Talk about the book, where can we find it? Uh, Are you on Medium? One quick thing, you know, we're going to have Token Camp coming up in Lithuania. We've got a one week workshop and unconference in Vilnius, Lithuania. I know that sounds like that? nowhere. What's the date? It's July 15th to 22nd. It's free, Pillar's paying for it. It's at a resort. We're taking over a resort with crazy crypto people, skin in the game tokens, token camp. Yeah. We've got a business agility camp for yeah. entrepreneurs, for investors, for coders. We're going to do, in fact, we're, I can just announce right now that we're doing a hackathon with Radix, an incredible new blockchain. Cool. And a bunch of interesting people. Uh, Lex Oakland will be there, Vinay Gupta. We're going to have learning, learning, learning and that's, for seven that's days at a, and seven that's at a resort. And it's, it's at a resort um, so it's in Lithuania. All one compound. Yeah, we're taking it over, and there'll be a little golf. <laughs> but it's good for families. Uh, we did it last I year. I checked it out. It's got a lot of lake there too. Uh, you got a lake. It's, it's got it's, golf courses. It's going to be really fun. And we did it last year, and people were learning until one o'clock in the morning. Well, what's the capacity so, you're looking at for that event? Five hundred people. So intimate. 
It's a very intimate it should event. should be perfect. We're going to be bl blasting out. You should come. We're going to be blasting yeah. out on 4K. We've got enough bandwidth to send yeah. to YouTube and to wherever else you want to distribute video. Yeah. You can be part of the media center. Awesome. Well, David Siegel, great to have you on. Final question, your sure. takeaway from Blockchain Week. Obviously, new, sure. entrants are, new actors are coming into the system. Yeah. Community's booming. It's still tight-knit. Yeah. But now you have finance, you have tech, and you have developers all coming together. Your thoughts of the show this week, Blockchain Week? Yeah, one thing, the demos are pretty lame in general, I think. We still aren't paying much attention to user experience at all. Yep. I think the enterprise guys have a lot to learn because they're kind of playing their normal enterprise game and it doesn't look so good here. Yeah, Jason was talking about the, the, uh, the blockchain washing. <laughs> Basically putting a blockchain. We added blockchain to this enterprise project and look. Yeah, is that a real dynamic in your opinion? I think they're figuring it out. I think some of the academic and some of the white paper stuff I've seen yeah, very is, is okay. And commercializing it, it they're, they're on the path to learning how to commercialize it, yeah. but they're not part of us. They're not, they're not, they'll never be crypto anarchists, okay, fine, but they don't really seem to get us yeah, yeah. and to be part of it. They're, it's, it's amazing to see a conference where IBM, Microsoft, uh, 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 you know, these other big names are Deloitte, are like in their own little pockets on the side and yeah. no one's paying It's a toe in the water very, for them. Um, they're not paying much attention because you go in there and it's the normal marketing jargon and, and brochures and it doesn't feel like they're really engaging. Yeah. I'd love to see more engagement with our community. And they got to really get engaged in. The good news is, for IBM at least, they're part of the Linux Foundation, the Hyperledger project, so we're seeing some open source is there. I mean, I'd like to see more thought leadership, more real, you know, publish some papers, come to our conferences and give us some substance. Well, I mean, I talked to Michael yeah. Dell and Pat Gelsinger, for instance, and uh -huh. uh, you know, they are into blockchain. Michael Dell's watched all our videos. He's, yeah. He'll probably watch this video. Uh -huh. um, they're learning, and, and the yeah. statement is, what they're doing is they're giving it to their R&D teams. So Office of the CTO, they're not really, so it's very academic to your yes. point. They haven't really operationalized the ethos. You know what, and it's time for experiments. Yeah. There's no way you're going to blockchain your whole company your whole supply chain. It is time for experiments, and it's time for guys like Michael Dell to jump in and say, What's your advice to Michael? What would you tell him to do? It's time for experiments. We're going to do some things. We're going to try some things. We're going to partner up. The Hyperledger stuff, you know, try more than that. Don't just be going to meetings and, and summits and top down. Try some bottom up yeah. stuff. Uh, empower your employees, Michael. You're not Michael, but I'm telling you, yeah. Michael, <laughs> empower people to try some things. They might even not be, they might be quasi-legal, but if it's an experiment, you're yeah. going to learn something, yeah. and then you can talk to the lawyer. Don't have the lawyers and the and the management yeah. say what the program is. Because that'll put the, put, a, put it in a box. It'll really, they won't get it. They won't get it. They'll stop the action. They won't find yeah. that. Ask for forgiveness, the, not permission. Ask for, <laughs> go do it. Go build, get, hire some crazy crypto people and tell them to look for inefficiencies in your whole operation yeah. and cut them down by 90%. David, great conversation. We could go for another hour. You're going to be a regular, I can tell, on theCUBE. <laughs> when we do our live format, we're going to certainly have you back. Keep in touch. Sure. I'm John Furrier here at Blockchain Week and Consensus is wrapping up the day three of coverage. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Be right back. <laughs>